Hello and welcome to Wake and Jake, always the most special edition of the month. Foolish Bailey is here along with Foolish David as we discuss a couple mock trades. We are putting ourselves in the laboratory as Bailey has brewed up, concocted uh, some potential trade deadline deals. I am coming in blind. This is the perfect scenario for me, Bailey. Uh, Mm. I, you know... I've been called Connecticut's Joe's McFly. I react to things, um, and I go from there. While you were able to get in the lab a little bit, and I'm I'm interested to see if you're trying to pull pull the fleece over my head. Is that pull the wool over my eyes while I get fleeced? Is that the phrase? Yeah, I don't know, but either way, I'm just I've always been excited to role play with you. I didn't quite think it would be like this, but yeah, late at night, I just think, man, I would love to role play with with talking Jacob. It's uh, it, you know, it's been referenced a couple times. The deep cut crew knows we, you know, in a way, we did do that in one out of the park sim again. There oh, that's will, true. There will be a special day uh, where we role play another time. Um, Bailey, I want I want to get right into it uh, because I want to see where your head's at. So. I don't think you have to necessarily, of the trades you made, I, I guess how many, give me your, you have five of them, give me your scope mm-hmm. of like, I don't know what the scale would be. If, if, if 10 is I love this and three is like, this is weird, but I'm interested, like give me, I, I guess give me a little perspective before we dive into the first one. Yeah, I think, I think I'll just put it this way in terms of like leverage and the effect like the ripple effect this would have on the season, Major League Baseball. I'm going to kind of warm you up here. And I think each trade is going to get progressively bigger and bigger and more impactful. I love it then. That's that's perfect. Um, Because I, you know, I kind of need to get loose too. I don't want to be just getting raked over the coals here. So, Bailey, with that, let's go. Uh, Screw pleasantries. Give me what GM or what team am are you calling from and (laughs) i'm picking up the phone as right okay so first of all i want to congratulate you jake because i don't know if you just saw the news but you've been named the gm of the cincinnati reds oh yes yes uh thank you we've uh i am walking tall right now (laughs) yeah uh the reds i mean my goodness I think me and Jolly labeled them as the team with the least amount of hope this season, but, uh, you know, Jolly doesn't really know ball. Um, no. That, oh, what's this? Bling, oh. bling, bling. <laughs> okay, hello. Hi, it's me, the Kansas City Royals. Oh! Kansas City Royals. I, uh, you know, hey, it, you know, sometimes baseball happens, huh? Uh, so yeah, just not our year. Didn't didn't bounce uh, your way this year. Uh, what uh, I I guess what what's going on? You know, you guys are still reshaping your future a little bit. How how can we help you today? Well, I I couldn't help but notice that you only have one lefty in your bullpen right now. Yeah. Um, and you know, we thought maybe we could send you a, a relief pitcher who has a two point six one ERA in his last hundred eighty innings since the start of twenty twenty one. 51 saves and this isn't a two-month rental because you would still have him under your control for one year after this and that's going to be mr scott barlow scott barlow um coming over to become a cincinnati red he already knows the midwest okay um he is righty i thought you said he was lefty did i dream that oh is he Oh, is he righty? Wow, dude. You're really... Did I mix him up with... I, I think I might have done a Scott Barlow, Joe Barlow. That happens some... Uh, no, Joe Barlow's righty, too. Joel... Is Scott Barlow righty? He's righty. So now I feel like you're... I'd hang up oh, the yeah. phone right now. Well, yeah, I totally agree with you on that. <laughs> I thought he was a lefty. Yeah, yeah. hang up on me. Okay. Done. But anyways, uh, your your bullpen's still not, not the best after uh, Diaz. I need help either way. I will... Yeah. Enough with the pranks, lefty righty. Yeah. What uh? What do you want for a year and a half of Scott Barlow? I mean, you know, he's he's okay. Yeah. I I want um I want a prospect in your system called Carlos Jorge. And now, just to I'm sure you know who that is because you are, of course, the GM of the yes. Cincinnati Reds. But just to remind the people who may be listening in to our conversations, uh, Carlos Jorge is a 19 year old second baseman. Yeah. He is playing his first season 
of full season A ball this year. He has a 289 average, 389 on base, and 458 slugging with seven home runs and 28 Ooh. stolen bases in 70 games. Um, basically, you know, this is a, this is a high upside guy with a lot of development left. And it's one of those where, uh, you know, you have to ask yourself, does Barlow move the needle enough to, you know, with the possibility that I could look like an idiot in about five years. Bailey, I love, I love that you opened up with the Royals Reds trade, uh, including young Carlos Jorge, who I obviously know out of Puerto Plata. Um, sure. You know, I mean, you've been several times. He's been doing, uh, all he's done is hit, uh, and something you've left out, uh, he is stealing bags. Um, 28 steals at De- High A Daytona this year. Bailey, I, I have to be honest with you. I, I love where our team has gotten to. Uh, our our Reds have are competing for the Central this year, and I do plan on adding... I don't know how much Scott Barlow moves the needle for me, and I I don't want to come off as a prospect. You know uh, I'll call up any prospect at any time. Carlos Jorge, a lefty hitting middle infielder that's been producing for a year and a half of Scott Barlow, I'm I'm not doing that for a guy that uh, in his minor league career, 159 games, has a 917 OPS. No, that's he's not on the table for me. All right, I hear it. He's uh, on the you know, table, but not uh-huh. not for Barlow. Not for Scotty B, no, I'm sorry. Okay, okay, I got gotcha. you. I just, you know, uh, relief pitching is going to be at a premium this deadline, so uh, if if you want to play a little hardball, you got to play a little hardball. I'd point out you have Matt McClain and Ellie De La Cruz and Jonathan India. You just, you know, but yeah, if that's your move, that's your move. Are you J.J. Piccolo, the executive vice president of baseball operations and general manager of the Kansas City Royals? Uh, why, why, yes, I am. <laughs> Couldn't you tell by how I hold my phone? If this was a prank call. <laughs> God damn it. Um, yeah, I, I guess for me, I don't know, man. It, if I'm the Royals, I, I just did a little bit, or excuse me, if I'm the Reds, I did this a little bit with BBD. Um, I'm going to add, I, I want to show my team that I, I believe in something. Like we've, you guys have done a good job of getting to this point. I want to reward you. Um, I don't know. I, I think adding Barlow, obviously they need help in their bullpen. I would love to deep dive into the Reds org more. I think I would be able to convince you into another piece than young, handsome Carlos Jorge. No? Yeah, I know. You probably could. Um, Royals, man, they are... I can't believe they don't have more to sell. But I guess I can. They're on... They're technically on A's level this year. I think Brady Singer is going to be interesting for them. I think they're going to get some serious calls on him. I, I think that's going to be the... He has a chance to be the surprise. Oh, wow. The Royals moved on from him and another team yeah. taps into a... Probably something better for the next couple of years. Shall we move on to the next trade? Why don't you bring me Brady Singer to Cincinnati? That actually works. That fits uh, my window. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. But uh, unfortunately, he's the only pitcher uh, we have developed in the last uh, 25 years. So we're going to have to <laughs> hold on to him. All right. Well, I'm sorry to turn down your first trade, Bailey. No problem, no problem. And I like that there's going to be a crescendo because, God, the real sports junkies were addicted to that one. Yeah. But I like that we're building to something. So what's your second deal? Well, first of all, I wanted to congratulate you because I'm not sure if you'd heard, but you are now the GM of the New York Yankees. Oh, I am familiar with this organization. I just Googled Yankees GM like I don't know. Yeah. I just want to see what would pop up. But. All all the things that the people said on Twitter about Brian Cashman, it finally came true. And then all the people who are always like, they should make uh, Foolish Bailey and John Boy and Jared Carabas the commissioner of baseball. Yeah. They actually got their wish because somehow you ended up the GM of the Yankees. It happened. It finally yeah. happened. Twitter Twitter and threads won. Um, the, it, yeah, they can won. I, can I ask who's calling? Oh, yes, of course. It's, well, it's not a long-distance call. It's the New York Mets. 
Wow. Um, yeah. And if I remember correctly, uh, you know, Billy Epler, we've we've worked a lot in the class uh, in the past with tight quarters. I mean, you're you're one of my offspring. Yes, uh, and just uh, you know, lover as well. <laughs> Okay. Okay. No, <laughs> hey, we said we're we're saving that role play. Uh, okay, Billy. Uh, hey, man. Secrets. Tough. Tough season over there. Um, are you guys Are you guys emptying the whole cupboard, or what What are we looking to do? We're We're not emptying the whole cupboard, but uh, we do have a piece that I think would interest you. Sure. Uh, ch- as just as a as a little bit of a preview to uh, the rest of the content we'll be recording today. Uh, this player has been, uh, according to Foolish Baseball's newest metric, uh, one of the top hitters in MLB so far this season. It may surprise you, but it is Tommy Pham. So, uh, interesting. I-, I thought you might bring Tommy Pham. I-, I thought you could also bring Starling Marte or Marcana to the table, but um, I'm interested in Tommy Pham because he has been killing it. Um And I mean, true rental, you know, 35-year-old, 2021 Atlanta Braves trade for as many outfielders as you can fashion, Tommy Pham would fit fit that mold a little bit. Certainly. Uh, So so do you want to know who I would like in return? I would love to know who you're eyeing in our deep, crazy deep Deep, minor league organization. Yeah, you know, I, I doubt it's a top 30 guy, but go on. (laughs) <laughs> uh i would i would like clayton beater huh. who you uh originally acquired from the uh joseph gallo deal so in a strange way you've traded two months of joseph gallo for two months of tommy fam uh the trick with beater is you know he has come along a little bit but when you look at the walks at the minor league level and just the mm-hmm. command and control he's probably a reliever you know, that that's probably uh, he's got some serious reliever risk long term. And, you know, you guys have a, a pretty crappy offense this year. And mm. as good as fam has hit on the surface, he's actually better sort of under the hood. Interesting. And Bailey, you did tease it there. I didn't tease it well enough. You you do have a new stat that you want to reveal to the people that we're going to circle up at the end of this. So I'm, I'm excited to see where Tommy fan lands on that. Cause maybe you can make me even more excited about him. Uh, I guess here's what I would counter. Um, if, if the Mets are, if you guys are doing this and I'm the Yankees, uh, it's no surprise. We've had, we've had a lot of holes this year. Um, and if I'm giving you Clayton Beater, who I think has improved his stock as a prospect uh, since the Joey Gallo times, um, I think I'm going to need you to throw in and probably eat some money on either Canna or Starlin Marte. Um, mm. You know, Canna has been, I mean, quite literally Mark Canna. Um, his slugging's a little down, but every other number is there. Um, and you know, what? there's a team option for next year. Maybe, maybe for this year's salary, I might, I might have to have you eat a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. and you know, Starling Marte has been underperforming. So, uh, but you know, maybe we can, he could tap into something for a couple months there. You know, we like the speed obviously, and, uh, he could play center if needed. So, uh, I guess, if it was Marte or Canna that you had to move on from, and you know, I can I can find a 40th ranked prospect to throw in there if that's what's really holding you up, and we figure out the mm-hmm. money. Um, what uh, interested? Not interested? Where are you at? I w- I would probably move on from uh, Marte just because he sort of owed more money, more years, you know. So this is uh, you know where I think we start to discuss uh, cash. Oh my God! I did not realize how much Starling Marte was owed. Uh, he <laughs> well, will, it's too late. He it's will, too late, no, Brian no, Cashman. No. You've made a terrible mistake. <laughs> Starling no Marte backs. is owed twenty million the next two years. Billy, 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 Billy. Hey, <laughs> Marte's out. I should not have even mentioned him. Uh, you but don't would, you need speed? Uncle Steve would really have to contribute. Oh, yeah. Would really have to contribute to that. 
Um, Canna makes more sense, honestly. Yeah, I Tommy Pham and Mark Canna. The Yankees need lefties, man, but I've heard I heard former GM Brian Cashman complain so much that corner outfielders were not available that I think trading for guys like this at the deadline. If you're not trading for a Soto, um if you know, um, Mark Canna could come over and have an 800 OPS for two months. Mark Canna could come over and have a 650 OPS for two months. You'd probably say the same for Tommy Fan, although you have advanced stats that may tell me differently. Um, I think the Yankees would have room for both of those guys on their roster. I think the Yankees need to be looking at the 2021 Atlanta Braves as a little bit of a roadmap of what they need to do that if Tommy Pham and Mark Canna were there and I was giving a Clayton Beater and maybe a deeper cut prospect, I would I would be very interested in that trade. Can I can I tell you what I think? <laughs> yeah, Bill. I, as the GM of the New York Mets. Yeah. I think I agree. I think I would give you Canna and Pham for Beater and then you know maybe a little throw in or maybe a little cash or something like that. Should that happen? I don't know because, that, well, it kind of leaves the Mets with, uh, they went from maybe too many corner outfield guys to too few, you know? Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, if the Mets, it's all about if the Mets uh, want to like actually, that would be like a pretty decent way for them to at least shed some salaries just because Canna's owed some money too. So you you believe in Tommy Pham because I, I see the stats. I believe. I- I, know. I think Fam is better than Canna right now, at least for the next two months. Okay, I get that's what I don't know. I mean, Fam's stats are incredible, and I've obviously known Tommy Fam for years, not on a personal level, but um, you know, a sneaky on base king. There's ways to butter knife his stats throughout the years that he was one of the better on base players in baseball. Um, interesting personality to add to your team at the deadline. That would be my oh, other yeah. hesitation. But at the same time, with where the Yankees are at, I'll, I'll put any gasoline on the fire. Um, yeah. So did we trade? I think we just traded. I think you negotiated a little bit extra, and I think we made the deal. The first trade in Wake and Jake history has been brought to you by Tommy Johns. Trade in... Your old underwear. You you joked before. Tommy John is a name that goes with baseball, Bailey. Sure is. Uh, and it goes with your baseballs because the summer heat is picking up and you got to take care of the fellas downstairs. Bailey, I didn't tell you this, and I've mentioned this in a couple ad reads. I, I had one pair of Tommy Johns. They were like, I'd do laundry, um, and I'd map out my Tommy John day. Uh, the biggest one that I mapped out, my wedding. They're my go-to, wow. Yeah. They're my go-to if I'm having a, a day. I want my TJs on. Uh, and right now, you can shop Tommy John Summer Collection. Get 20% off your first order at TommyJohn.com slash JohnBoy. 20% at TommyJohn.com slash JohnBoy. Um, and the other thing that I've been throwing in lately, after we did our first Tommy John partnership announcement, text from Jerry Blevins. He's a Tommy John guy. And guess mm. what? <laughs> Jerry Blevins takes care of his Peter Moylan, if you know what I'm saying. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, go check it out. I might send you a pair, Bailey. That might be a, a gift from me to you. Used or, or new? <laughs> we'll see how the rest of the trades go. Uh, okay, okay. So the Reds have turned down the Royals. The Mets and Yankees make something work, which, by the Some way, magic. Cashman, Epler, I, they know what each other values. The Mets have extra corner outfielders. The Yankees are hunting for them. Sometimes things need to be less complicated than like, I don't know if we should trade cross town. What if they play well there? Get over it. Exactly. Get over it. Uh, Bailey, with your third trade, mm-hmm. crescendo, where are we going? Well, you. it's funny that you bring up the, the possibility of, of trading cross town. How about trading uh, in the division? Uh, because you, you, Jake, yeah, this is we're we're switching up the roles a little bit here because we're going to kind of make you the selling team, okay, and myself the buying team. That's fine. Uh, Jake, you are the GM of the Washington Nationals. Okay, is that still Mike Rizzo? 
I'm sure yeah, I'm pretty sure he's like the everything there. He's yeah, he he's <laughs> Mike Rizzo. Okay. Hello. 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 Who am I t- who am I speaking with? Uh you are speaking with uh Kim Ang's personal assistant. Ah. Hello. Hello, Roger. Yes. Hello, yes. Uh who is named Roger. Yeah. <laughs> um, Roger, I'm not sure if you noticed our third baseman is Gene Segura. It hasn't worked out. Mm-hmm. That has been a little bit of, of an experiment, a little bit of a gambit for us. It's not working. He's yeah. not hitting. He's just not the guy, at least for this year. But we're actually, we have a pretty good team. Right now, Fangrass has us set about 60% chance to make the playoffs. Yeah. And we're going to, but we're going to need a boost somewhere in the lineup. We think third base is the way to go. And of course, you have. Chamber Candelario. Yes, sure do. Who he's who, been congratulations. Awesome. Yes. I mean, mm-hmm. this is the this is this is what every bad team should be doing. You go, you sign a guy like that for five million dollars, one year deal, yeah. play him every day, hope he plays well, and all of a sudden, uh Candelario is the is the third best third baseman in Major League Baseball by F4 this year. Yeah, you know, I, I think he really got a tough draw. I think he was a little banged up in 22 and kind of kind of had the Tigers rub off on him, a little role play there. Uh, that Yeah, that that's really an outlier season uh, for me because otherwise, you know, those past three years, he's 120-plus OPS third baseman, switch hits. Uh, that Yeah, he's uh, – and I got I, – Roger, this phone has been lighting up with James oh, yeah. Candelario trade. So what a – what are you what are you selling me? Well, granted, it is it is still a two month rental sort of deal here, but uh, we are going to. Uh, he loves send Miami, you... though. Oh, he does love Miami. Well, that's that's a boost he for loves us. Miami, yes. Uh, so, uh, we're going to send you starting pitcher. This is a great baseball name. I don't know if you get bonus points for that. Starting pitcher prospect Dax Fulton. Okay, a twenty twenty second rounder. Uh, had a good amount of hype coming into this year. He's maybe uh, fallen off a little bit because his ERA is around five in Double A this year, and he has a pretty high walk rate. Uh, but he, you know, he throws pretty hard. He's uh, one of the top ten prospects in our system. Uh, and but wait, there's more. Uh, we are also going to throw in a second prospect for you, uh, a third baseman prospect. You're probably maybe more familiar with. Uh, Jordan Groshans, who has mm. been at times in his minor league career a top 100 prospect. Uh, last couple years in the minors hasn't been great, but this is this is very much post hype because there was there were times definitely where he was like a top 50 prospect even. So uh, those two combined uh, for two months of uh, Candelario. Well, I have I have to say, Roger, I'm uh, <laughs> you have my ear. Mm. You have my ear. Um, Because, yeah, there's a little, we're in a little post hype with Groshans, although he's, you know, he's been struggling at AAA Jacksonville a little bit this year. Um, You know, he was, he was fine last year. And he's been traded a couple times now. I guess I would have to. Yeah, he was with Toronto. I would have to check some of his character issues. Um, You know, if you guys are also looking to move on. Uh, from young Jordan, that would, um, I don't know, I'm a little suspect there. The pitcher, who I haven't forgotten, Dax Fulton. Yes. You know, big lefty, 6'7", 235. Uh, if I'm being honest, what I do as Mike Rizzo mm-hmm. is I do, uh, I'm going to have to, you know what, actually, give me give me one second. I put the phone down, and I go, we're punching this, um, mm. but I'm just trying to play it cool. I probably I get back on. I beg for like some 19 year old uh, kid, island kid that throws a hundred and say, you know, throw him in the deal. It's done right now. Uh, but I think you're giving, I think you're giving more of an offer than I guess I expected because you know, like mm-hmm. you said, Groshans was a former top 100 prospect. I think Dax Fulton uh, dipped dipped in there at one point. Uh, baseball, yeah, maybe preseason. Baseball Prospectus 2022, the only place he showed up. That, yeah, if I could... This was the goal of bringing yeah. in Jammer Candelario, right? It was, hey, this is one of the 
teams that I you can get guaranteed playing time, we'll put you in there. He has been great this year. That if you're offering me, and the part that may be coming realistic about this, these are two prospects that are running into it a little bit. Uh, yeah. Dax Fulton hasn't been lighting the world on fire. Same with Groshans. That even with some name familiarity, um, this is a somewhat fair offer slash I think you might be overpaying, so I would accept. All right. Well, I think we've got a deal. Can I, From my perspective, I'm just sending away two prospects who aren't having a good year to you know hopefully punch my ticket to the playoffs. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to say it's a no-brainer on your end, but you know, pitching wise, the the fish are there, and then uh, the Marlins organizationally, you almost have to be at a point where, like, hey, maybe we don't have the hitting part figured out. So if we can tap into a guy that's having a nice year, switch hitting at third base, we can plug into the middle of our lineup. That doesn't seem too bad. So I like that. That's not um. Not the sexiest trade you might see at this deadline, but a real one, I'd say. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's he's almost certainly going to be traded. So that's and honestly, of the guys you can pretty much guarantee will be traded. He might be the best position player available. You know, I mean, he's I mean, it's him and it's like, you know, Bellinger and, uh, you know, it's yeah, it's I mean, he's having a really good year. Yeah, belly trumps him. I mean, I think so too. Former MVP who has been performing the shoulder injury stuff. Um, what other position position player is like a lock to be traded? Assistant GM DVDs thinking on it. I don't know. That's the weird thing. Like all the bad teams are bad because they don't have hitting. Yeah, a cardinal will be traded. Right. Yeah. We don't know know which one. They don't know. Keep somebody. Hmm. Yeah, it's there's it's a lot of like maybe because like maybe Lane Thomas gets traded and then you know, yeah. that's another Washington guy. I was gonna that's say I might. Candelario. I was gonna say I might up the package a little bit and and try to get Lane in there too just to see where you guys are selling high on him. But his his baseball yeah. savant was really nice if I remember correctly. He's he's doing really good, but I think they have I think they have uh, years of control yeah, over him that two, would make it harder to part with. Two and a half. They don't, they don't three have three to do it right that, now. Yeah, I don't. I don't see that happening. Okay, I two for three. Two for three. In division. But if you're the Nats, I mean, you're looking at two months of Jamer in a season that doesn't matter. That's a no-brainer. Um, yeah. And Crosstown rivalry. So we're just, we're breaking the mold. We are. Where are we breaking the mold next? Jake, congratulations, buddy. Yes. This is this is is this the fourth time I've done this already? <laughs> um, I was just yeah talking with uh, Andrew Friedman, mm. and he was saying, you know what? I think I've just had enough. I think I want to just go sit by the beach, let someone else run the Dodgers. And he, weirdly enough, in the conversation, he mentioned your name. So I think you are now the GM of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Wow. That's uh that would be a big step in my career. Yeah, I mean you've already been the GM of three other teams, but mm-hmm. yes, it would it would still be, you know, that's I mean that's a Dodgers. pretty highly respected position in sports. We're going to give you president of baseball operations as well. Okay. We're going to we're going to we're gonna, that's a promotion. That's just smart know? so I don't get stolen by another team. Um Yeah, exactly. Who's uh who's on the horn? Hey, it's me, the Chicago White Sox. I thought it might be. Yeah, you probably figured that was what it was going to be. I thought it might be. Are you calling about a local boy who's on your team? Uh, no, I'm calling about Oscar Colas. No, I'm just, yes, I am calling about a local boy. Okay. Um, the local boy by the name of Lucas Giolito. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't help but uh, recognize that the Dodgers pitching staff and particularly their rotation is sort of uncharacteristically bad. Um, because if you look over the last few years or so, they have been historically great. Right. And now as a unit, they're probably right around average. But, you know, I mean, we've, uh, you know, Kershaw's coming back. Bueller's probably going to come back. Um, you know, and some of our young arms, Bobby Miller, Emmett Sheehan, Michael Grove, like we're, you know, we're, we are the Dodgers. There's there's a reason yeah. they handed the keys to me. Like, well, we 
We can still win this thing. Oh, I, I definitely agree. But, uh, you know, don't you want to, you know, go ahead and make yourself hopefully the favorite in the West? You're still trying to chase down those pesky snakes, you know? Oh, they're, we're putting them in our rear view. They're gone. But, <laughs> but no, I, I, you know, Lucas Giolito, that change up, I think he, he would, he would like pitching in front of the hometown crowd. What a, a true rental. I mean, what, I'm sure you guys aren't looking for much. Yeah, well, it is a rental, but I do think just with you being the Dodgers, there is also the possibility to extend there. But yes, a, a rental. He has two months left on his uh, contract, effectively. Uh, here's who I'd like. Uh, I would like, uh, and I don't know how to say his first name, so I'm going to attempt two pronunciations at it. It's either Jorbit or Yorbit, and I think it's Jorbit. Okay. But Jorbit Vivas, a second baseman slash third baseman who has performed at every level of the minors, currently a 136 WRC plus as a 22-year-old in double A. It would just be a bat. You guys have Michael Bush. You guys have Gavin Lux, who's going to come back next year. You know, you 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 grow guys like this. How are you spelling this gentleman's name again? J O R B I T. Jorbit, like orbit, but with a J. Oh yes, of course. There's Jorbit Vivas from Venezuela, um, who has been putting up some nice numbers at Double A Tulsa this year. Okay. Can I tell? Uh, oh, but wait, there's more. I was really hoping that I was, there's going to be a, some another prospect that I was really counting on Landon, and I was particularly counting on Landon Knack. Landon Knack. Landon uh, Knack is getting off. And here's the thing about Landon Knack: it's another sort of Dodgers riches thing. This is probably their like tenth best pitching prospect, not prospect overall. I'm talking tenth best pitching prospect they have Emmett Sheehan they have Bobby Miller mm. they've got Grove they've got Pepio they got yeah, I got all these guys and then uh in there is, is Landon Knack in the mix and but he probably becomes the White Sox first second or third best pitching prospect uh so that just sort of shows you the the disparity in the system but yes I want I want those two in ex- uh but uh in exchange I'll give you Lucas Giolito hmm who, by the way, is an incredible uh, uh, addition to the uh, Chris Rose's rotation as well. So that's uh, that's bonus points. That's right. We would we would get some extra views and sell tickets from that John Boy Media push. Um, mm-hmm. Here's what I'll tell you: I can make Landon Knack happen. Um, mm-hmm. You know, he he. We actually just promoted him to Triple A. Uh, he had 12 starts at Double A to a 2-2 ERA. Um, yeah, you know we we've loved what we've seen from Landon Knack, but you're right. We do, you know, we have some pitching depth, um, and especially if we add Lucas Giolito for the rest of the year, we can we can bottle up some of those other guys. Um, Jorbit, uh, it seems <laughs> Bailey. It seems like you very much like lefty hitting infield prospects. Um, from what I've seen from your work. Uh, it seems you like you do too, the, the tone you're taking with me right now. I don't think I can do Jorbit and Landon Knack. I, I think you would have yeah. to pick one of those guys. And then I, hey, I understand, you know, this is kind of like lottery tickets, right? You're, you're going to need a second ticket. But I, yeah. I would have you pick between Knack and Jorbit and then give you another piece. I don't think I realized just how good of a season Knack was having. I know he's older, like he just turned 26, but he is he is kind of killing it down you know, there some, right now. Sometimes I, I may, those, have, may have underestimated him. Sometimes those East Tennessee State guys take a little longer to, uh, to put it together. Famously, they do. <laughs> so do you... Now, we talked about this the other day a little bit. Uh, Giolito mm-hmm. is going to be one of the biggest pieces at the deadline. Um you do have to beat a qualifying offer prospect, uh, which mm. I don't know. We're in an interesting area here where I don't know if those guys are. Uh, it would depend on your scouting and blah, 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 all that part of it. Um, and I don't know. I could see the Giolito sweepstakes really picking up. Like, I, I could see the team we stumbled into the other day is I think the Houston Astros may be looking for pitching. 
Sure. Yeah. Um, and obviously every team in a way is looking for pitching, but um, I don't know. I think Giolito really moves the needle for for LA or Houston or another team that that I might have to double back and if I really wanted him. Yeah. Maybe you're not wrong. I don't know. I don't know. But I the other thing that's thrown me off with the Dodgers, Bailey, and I did have some people comment under our last episode, because if you remember that they came into the offseason and everyone was like they're gonna stay under the thrash threshold. Uh, yeah, that's the Atlanta threshold. Um, but I think they did end up going over and, um, they did. And I think it might've actually been, I could be way off here speculation. Uh, but I think it might've been some of the Bauer stuff actually. Right. Came back to boost them over. That was, yes, that was definitely in play. Um, and I think, I think they have money and they're willing to do it. I um if I'm the Dodgers, the other thing I have working against me is I I think we might be able to you know, as an organization we can tap into anything. Mm-hmm. That if the Giolito price tag is somewhere we're uncomfortable with, we can move on to the next guy and feel pretty okay about it. Yeah. So I don't know. I I think our talks our current talks would have us landed in a kind of an interesting spot, and I think we would be leading up right to the deadline. Not sure if we were going to punch it. Um, yeah, and maybe I would find, uh, you know, exchange, you know, one of uh, Vivas or uh, Knack for like a slightly lower tier prospect, and then we get the deal done or something like that. But it would also depend on what does Houston want to give me for Giolito, you know? I have I have it ending up with you hammering the table saying, no, I need Jorbit and I need Landon Knack. Yeah. Because that's what's going to win us the Central next year. That's right. So hey, I don't know. Anyone can win the Central next year. I'm currently going to put that as a no trade. I, I think... All right. I... As the Dodgers GM, I don't think I was excited enough, and I think there is going to be a GM excited enough to go get Lucas Giolito and win you over. So I think, I think we're two for four. I think we're 2019 LeMahieu right now. Mm-hmm. Um, God, I miss him. So all right, Bailey, this is it. You uh, and I don't know what this is. So uh, there's part of me that hopes it's another Royals reliever, but I mm-hmm. I feel like you do have something up your sleeve. So our our final, the biggest trade that might happen this deadline. Jake, you are the GM of the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, of oh, Angels no. of Los Angeles, of Anaheim, of California. Be careful, we're hot. <laughs> <laughs> you got me there. Uh, okay, Uh you have uh you have a player by the name of Shohei Otani on your team. Is that correct? Yes, he's uh the only thing I would check you on is I would say he's more than a player. I'd say he's a movement. But uh, okay, go on. Uh, this player named Shohei Otani, he is in fact a free agent at the end of this season. Correct? Uh, we're talking about extensions, but currently it would be listed as that. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so. We I would have, effectively be renting this player. We have and a four-year, one twenty-five extension offer that he hasn't responded mm, to out there. Yeah, not not quite, not quite. Uh, let let me tell you about this before I reveal. I don't even want to reveal what team I am just yet, but I <laughs> okay. do want to tell you this much about about who I am. <laughs> when I trade this for sounds, Shohei Otani, this sounds like how the Angels actually conduct business. By the way, yes, this Ooh, is mystery caller for Shohei. <laughs> Ooh, don't tell us yet. Don't tell us yet. <laughs> okay. Ooh, I kind of like it. Ooh. Uh, so when when I trade for Shohei Otani, I've got him for the next few months, and that's it. He's a free agent. I'm not extending him. We are just going, you know, World Series or bust yes. this year. I am the Tampa Bay Rays. Hello, Tampa. I can't help but notice that despite my incredible start to the season, some of those teams in the East are starting to sneak up on me a little bit. Mm. And I also can't help but notice that if I were to trade for this generational player, I would immediately become 
the uh, about as overwhelming as a favorite you could be to win the World Series this year. Yeah, I mean the AL. There's, there's there is a somewhat clear path if one of the AL team steps it up to the next level. Currently, everyone's eyeing the Rays or the Rangers, but uh, the AL is pretty open. So uh, yeah, I could, you know, this this could. This trade could win you a World Series, which we know adds, you know, another prospect or two. Oh, yeah. Speaking of prospects, as you can imagine, it's going to take a lot of prospect capital to get this deal done. So to, so to kick things off, I will first of all offer you first baseman slash outfielder Kyle Manzardo. Okay. Kyle Manzardo, a 2021 second rounder. Coming into this year, he could have been rated as like a top 40-ish, top 50-ish guy because he absolutely shredded the minor leagues in 2022. This year, he's just kind of been all right. He's not going crazy in AAA by any means, but he would still be perceived by most as being a, a top 100 prospect right now. Uh, just an awesome bat, first baseman, corner outfielder, and, slash DH type. And you know what? It's it's uh it's Kyle Manzardo's birthday today. So all the Wake and Jake listeners go uh go hit up Kyle Manzardo cuz when you hear this it'll be happy belated, but happy happy yeah. 23rd. Tw- is he tw- 23 today? 23. So his value just went years down. Old. He was a 22 year down. old prospect, now he's 23. Yeah, I was going to I was going to say old 22 if if he was <laughs> indeed an old 22 if such a thing exists. Yeah. Um but there's, of course, that's not this all. Young spry twenty three. So mm. yeah, mm. okay. Fresh to and Zardo. All right. I mean, it's you know I'm trying I, to wish Shohei a... Otani. Yeah, I know it's Shohei Otani, but it's it's also just a few months of Shohei Otani. And you know, if you even if you're the Angels, if you feel like there's any chance of uh, you know getting him back, getting him the mega deal, you know. If you want to do just a little bit of cope right here, you could say, hey, we're trading them to the race. And, uh, you know, uh, they're not they're probably not going to extend them. They put all their eggs in the wander basket and we know they just don't operate under that type of budget. Usually we're still going to have a chance Uh, in free agency. Yeah. All right. So uh, in addition to that, because you can't imagine that was all I will also offer to you shortstop Carson Williams, a 2021 first rounder. So same draft for us. Uh, who is sort of rocketing up the prospect list right now. Right now, if you look at any sort of, of those like mid-season update prospect lists, he's like a top 25-ish prospect in baseball. Uh, you know, I know you have Zach Neto. You know, you, with those two, you'll kind of have your uh, infield figured out for the long term. That's your offer. Yes, I, I want to see what your thoughts are on that offer. I have to be honest with you. I um I'm expecting a little more. Um if if I'm being honest as the Angels GM, if I trade Shohei Otani, this is going to be the move that I am remembered for forever. This will be right. This is a legacy trade for me. And it can go one of two ways, right? It could be I was the GM. Who was it? Perry Min- Minisian? Is he? Yep. Um, cause I could ride this out forever. I I could be the GM that hey, we weren't re-signing Otani. We weren't gonna do anything. We weren't probably gonna make the postseason, which again is a little reflection, a slight reflection on me. I'm new to the gig, Billy Epler. Um. But I could also make a career out of this if I do this right. Um, if I can bring the Angels in a couple years, or even if someone were to take the gig over after me, and there's two guys from the Shohei Otani trade that are leaving their mark on the Halos in some way, you know, it, that will be the conversation. You know, almost every visiting broadcast, they'll come in and say, well, you know, they traded away Shohei Otani for this guy, and you know he he made two All Star teams, or he yeah. So the other thing that I I look at as a comparison, and people may be shocked to think of it as apples and oranges, but 
the Max Scherzer Trey Turner trade. Um, mm-hmm. There's another year of Trey that you know if Otani is Max Scherzer and Trey Turner, which in a way he is. Um, in theory, you're missing out on what would be a year of Trey Turner in that trade. But mm-hmm. I would contrast <laughs> Shohei Otani. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. like this guy is oh, living gosh, Babe Ruth. Uh, this guy will literally bring in ad deals for your final three months of the season as they air his games in Japan that I think organizationally there is a comparison to be made there. And in that trade, it was Josiah Gray, a young potential-filled starting pitcher who has now blossomed into his own and actually made the all-star team. Little natitude um, mm-hmm. in that all-star. Uh, got Cal- Kiebert Ruiz, mm-hmm. uh, who's been, you know, more or less an everyday catcher for us. Uh, he's, you know, still figuring things out, but as catchers go... Uh, it looks like we're going to have a, a young starting catcher to pencil in for the next few years. And we were also, you know, a couple pieces throwed, threw into that. Your guy Gerardo Carrillo. Carrillo? Oh, yeah. We go way back. Um, <laughs> he, uh, you know, he's working on things, as we all are at the minor league level. Um, and it was also Donovan Casey, uh, who also working on things at the minor league level. So, Mm -hmm. if I'm doing it, I need two big prospects. Um, I just gave them to you. I think if I'm the Rays, I would want a pitcher and a hitter Mm -hmm. um, in kind of Shohei Otani. And, you know, there's going to be a couple throw-ins that our scouts like that aren't prospects or another 18-year-old or something like that just because, again... I'm going to need lotto tickets if I'm giving away Shohei Otani. Um, I would pick one of Manzardo and Williams, I think. Mm -hmm. And then I would probably try to go for Taj Bradley. Um, I, you know, he's 22 years old. He's made the big leagues this year. He is, he is the pitching side of it that I, I would need, I would probably go Bradley and Manzardo. Um, Manzardo is higher ranked than Carson Williams. You did mention he's climbing, but uh, Manzardo, you know, he could be called up this year if we wanted to or next year. Yeah. That I, I'm basically guaranteed two major league high-level prospects that by this point next year we could be saying, like, wow, they, you know, they got a return for Shohei Otani. That I, I think I would have to, I would have to have... the. Give me Taj Bradley, Manzardo, and two random throw-in prospects that you pretend to care about, but you don't. Right. Oh, no. I can't believe we lost the two random throw-in no. prospects. No, no, no oh, way. Heavens. Take oh, heavens. A... Blind me. Let me pick out a random name. Uh, Cameron Misner? No. Actually, he's... Ooh, I, ooh, he, I actually kind of like yeah, he's, Misner, though. Yeah, he's, he's ranked on their list, so I'll take him out. Um, Let's go... Uh oh uh, Sean Hunley, stop. Stop it. He's in. You're fleecing us. Do you think the Rays would? Because the Rays I don't know, right? Like we've never we've not we haven't seen the Rays fully sell out, sell out. Like rental. We know we're giving up, you know, potentially six years of two guys. Do you think yeah. they would? Do you think the Rays front office is at the point where they'd snap and say like we need to win a world series yeah because i think well first of all i think they have to realize that this is this is the best team they've had in like a while you don't get a team like this every year even though everything they do is sustainable and it's based on the roster churn and all that it doesn't work out this well every year and i also think you know what smart teams do like the rays is they they sort of they sort of stay ahead of the curve and they zig uh, you know, when others are zagging. And so, you know, if if everyone's trying to be the smart team like the race, you know, then then maybe the the least predictable, least razy thing to do, like giving Wander Franco the mega contract, absolutely franchise defining, 
would be to go, hey, let's get, we have as stacked of a farm system as anybody. Let's go get us a Shohei rental and try to win the World Series and become legends. Yeah. It's, um, it's interesting. It's going to be talked about everywhere for the next two and a half weeks. I, or I guess it's two weeks now, right? My math right on that? Two weeks. Uh, and we will know if Shohei Otani gets traded. And I was, I was pretty much a firm no. And now I'm, I'm kind of a, yeah, you have to trade them. Like, mm-hmm. unless the Angels reel off eight and two, nine and one, something like that, then you can't. And I respect it. And that's where I want to be, obviously. Um, but otherwise you kind of have to, um, and if you are the Rays, that would be a really interesting moment because I'm sure they have big plans for Taj Bradley. I'm sure they have big plans for uh, Mansardo to actually look around the room and say, hey, are we going to give up potentially six years of two really good baseball players for two months of one really good, one incredible two-way baseball player? The conversations yeah. in that room would be unreal. Um you think the Rays, if I said Bradley and Manzardo in two randoms, you'd punch it? I don't know. The problem is, like, you have to almost ask yourself how much how much does having Taj in the majors this year move the needle for them, you know, because uh, that's a player they could become, you know, more and more reliant on, you know, even getting into the playoffs. I had a second sort of permutation of this trade where if you said no to those two okay i would also throw in uh who is currently ranked as their fifth best prospect uh left-handed starting pitcher mason montgomery uh 2021 sixth rounder 30 percent strikeout rate in double a our analytics just turned 23 our analytics hate him they hate they hate Mason Montgomery. They hate Mason Montgomery. That's why the Angels we breed pitchers. Do they not like the fastball shape? Because <laughs> he is deceptive. <laughs> it's that damn. He's got the the second highest release point in in Double A baseball. Um, yeah, man. And just a just a reminder as we dream these trades and we dream more trades going forward. Um, I want to double check this, but. Uh, Taj Bradley is, uh, is he the gift that keeps on giving trade for the Rays? Um, yes. Uh, Taj Bradley was the, um, my God. So wait, it was Chris Archer. Am I reading this right? There was... Was there two? Oh, are you thinking? Are you thinking Shane Boz? Is that who you're thinking of? The Pirates sent Shane Boz to the Rays with Tyler Glass now and yes. Austin Meadows for Chris Archer. Yeah. How did Taj Bradley? Because he was drafted by. Oh, I no, he's drafted it. by the Rays. I misread it. I was I was reading Glass now's Pittsburgh fifth round pick. I was like, my God. If he was in that deal, it feels like there's a new prospect in that deal every damn day. Um, the Wizards. They of- do have one trade with an insane tree, the Rays do, but I don't think it's actually the the big glass now one that everyone remembers. But they do have one. It's like a I don't I don't know if it was when they traded Longoria or what, but they do have a trade where they've basically built their whole team off of it. I can't remember which player it was, but it was probably like a decade James ago. James Shields? Was it one of those? Maybe, maybe, maybe something like that, yeah. Um, did that last deal get done? I don't know. Yeah, if you don't like Montgomery, I'm not sure if that deal gets done because I'm not sure if the Rays are giving up Taj. I don't think they would. I I think I think the Rays are so gung ho as an organization that I I agree. You're right. I think the Rays will acknowledge that something's different this year. Like. Mm-hmm. Hey, you know, I trading for old Nelson Cruz, Joe Ryan, by the way. Um, you know, hey, you know, maybe old Nelson Cruz goes nuts and has a has a 900 OPS while he's with the Rays, and that didn't happen. Um, to clear out five years of their future. For one guy, I just think the Rays front office can't do that. That they would, 
I think they would rather go trade for Giolito and a hitter <laughs> yeah. than, tr- than pay the Otani tax. Um, but I don't know. That's can, it, I, can I throw out one more name out there? And please. I didn't include him in the mock please. kind of on purpose, but Junior Caminero is like becoming a huge, huge prospect for them right now. And it would be sort of interesting to see, A, could he be involved in that trade? And B, you know, or is there, you know, as I've sort of proposed, a world where the Rays say, hey, we traded for Otani. We didn't give up Caminero. That's a win for us, even if we gave up Taj Bradley, you know. Otani is such a different thing, man. I uh, I can't imagine because like I like everything I oozed about being the GM that trades away Otani and I better make mm. sure that leaves an imprint like. Going going back to the Garrett Cole to Houston trade, when it was like, here's four pieces that all might rack up one war in a, in their three years. It was like, what? You're yeah. trading away Garrett Cole. You should you should want impact pieces, not pieces to keep your organization like when you need to call someone up when they're hurt. Like that was crazy. That I. If I'm trading away Shohei Otani, I better be able, when I'm on serious radio in a couple years, be able to say, well, I got these two guys. Um, yeah, and six or seven years of, like, three war players and, you know. And the other, the other side of it is to be the GM that goes and adds Shohei Otani to your team, like, that's everything you've ever wanted. <laughs> yeah. Like, you have a Rays team that bangs like no team ever. They pitch like traditional Rays teams. They play defense like Rays teams. But they homer. Jose Siri is going to have a 28 homer season. And you can add Shohei. If I'm any team and the Angels are ending the phone call with, if you do this, it's done, it's going to yeah. be really hard for me to say no. Um, right. And maybe that's why I'm not a GM, Bailey. Although I was five times in one day once. You were. Congratulations. And I can say that. a busy thanks. day. You made a lot of trades. I am uh, busy. You made, you made about two and a half trades, I think. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's a couple question marks out there. Um, yeah. I can't believe you you ended us with the Junior Caminero um, ending. Uh, he's rocketing up. Like, that's, he's, I don't, like, it's, it's not quite Wander Franco, but, I mean, it's, it's a little bit Wander Franco ish, like, like that twenty. I guess it was nineteen Franco had or eighteen. Imagine, uh, imagine being the the prospects traded for Shohei Otani. Like, action. that's maybe got to feel good. Like, that's got to be like, oh, they were only going to trade me if it was for <laughs> the greatest player of all time. That's how good I was. It feels good. And then I think it's horrifying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's horrifying until until you find your own, which, hey, maybe those guys will. Um, Bailey, thank you for partaking in that exercise. Um, man, some of the baseball, some of the baseball people are going to be truly excited to hear some of the prospects you busted out for us. Um, and now I'm excited to hear, because uh, you tease this to me a little bit, yeah. You have a new stat that might actually get you hired in a front office? <laughs> Let's hope so. Uh, okay, I'm going to send you actually a link to the spreadsheet if that's what you would Ooh, uh, okay. like to peer for yourself. What I've done is I've also sort of like marked off um, like the like sort of interesting players that, you know, if you want to talk about, hey, this guy's ranked really high. Hey, this guy's right. ranked not so high. What's keeping him from getting there? Uh, but hopefully uh, you and uh, BBD can both see that. Where are you sending Again, it? It's, it's in the uh, Zoom chat. You're forwarding you in one sec, Jake. Okay. Coming over. Uh, while you guys are opening that, I can actually give uh, a little bit of an introduction. Yeah, to, give us some uh, background, what it is, too. Like, how long has this what been I'm trying brewing? To yeah. The, the funny thing is, it's been brewing in my mind for probably, you know months now you know six months eight months it, you know so i was definitely thinking about it over the uh off season and i was thinking about particularly 
uh, one thing we discussed actually on on this program was uh, my foolish 50 list. Right. And I was thinking about what kind of stats am I looking at when I'm doing the foolish 50? And this was a year I got really into sort of the uh, hitting peripheral stats, which is to say, you know, if I'm not concerned necessarily with the outcomes like uh, a strikeout or a walk versus a hit or something like that, like who I think has sort of a good hitting process. Um, and then so uh, I basically have created this stat where I'm sort of separating uh, aspects of hitting into three different categories. Uh, one of the one of which is is discipline. Uh, and a couple of the stats that I'm looking at with regards to discipline are going to be chase rate. So how often do you swing at pitches outside of the strike zone? And then also in-zone contact rate uh, gets a pretty big emphasis here. So if you take a swing at a pitch in the zone, how often do you make com- contact? Out-of-zone contact matters as well. But the thing is, you're probably going to do damage on the pitches inside the zone. So we want to see the contact be good there. Uh, another, another DM looking at, I, I just called like dingers or something like that. Um, but that's going to be, you know, your barrel rate and your hard hit rate. Um, I've, I've, I've thought about sort of average exit velocity being in there, but th- that's a, that's a number that can be a little bit wonky sometimes, like depending on how that exit velocity is distributed. So I think almost like the hard hit rate is If better. you're hammering it into the ground, that number can become deceptive, right? And that, and that's where the third D Ah. comes in jake oh very smart uh distribution um so i've looked at a few things here but one of the bigger components of distribution was uh what Statcast calls sweet spot percentage uh sweet spots percentage that's how that's the percentage of your great balls excuse me that are between 8 and 32 in terms of the launch angle basically the sweet spot for you know hopefully getting the base hit uh if you hit it in the air and hard hopefully it's a home run uh, but yeah, so that's uh, uh, that launch angle component uh, is certainly there and it's have it, it's had a pretty interesting effect on uh, some of the hitters. Okay, so I'm I'm now in the list. Um, and do you are these currently ranked first to yes or I guess best to less? I don't, yes, this is. This ascending is of the order? 300, descending order? Yes, descending order of the 315 players. Uh, again, these I'm looking at first half of the season numbers here, but uh, of 315 hitters with at least 150 plate appearances uh, at the at the big league level. Uh, number one uh, is, a, is a Texas Rangers player, uh, and then you work your way down. So, at the top of this list, and this is... This is what gives the list some pretty good merit off the rip, Bailey. Um, Thank you. I'm seeing Corey Seager, Mookie Betts, Mike Trout, and Freddie Freeman, which I don't think... I don't... I think if you asked and you polled around baseball who are, you know, the five best hitters, I think there's a good chance all four of those names popped up. Yeah. I mean, Seager is, he's number one on the list, but I mean, he's, here's a guy who is playing at MVP level. He just happened to miss a month of the season. If Otani gets traded to the National League, it was one of the things we've stumbled into. Uh, Corey Seager uh, was kind of the front runner for AL MVP, I think. So um, that's a whole nother conversation. But yeah, Corey Seager, I mean, there was shift stuff there. Um, I think that Texas Texas ballpark figured itself out a little bit. I, I remember reading when they make new ballparks, sometimes it takes time for like the cement to actually like figure itself out. So Texas was this crazy pitchers park. And now I don't think it's as, as bad. Well, at least not for the Texas Rangers. Um, I guess as the list goes, you, you know, you see names, Brian Reynolds, Aaron judge, Sean Murphy, Ryan O'Hearn, Jake Bowers, and Tommy Pham right before Ronald Acuna Jr. I guess what is that telling you? Because I don't think anyone would take O'Hearn or Bowers <clears throat> over Acuna necessarily. Yeah. Um, but what am I seeing? Yeah, I well with with Bowers, I I, I just wrote it down as Jake Barrels as yeah. my note, and that's it. His his barrel rate is pretty insane, and that's a situation where the barrel rate is really sort of uh propping him up there. Uh, Ryan O'Hearn, he's just been, Ryan O'Hearn's been pretty hitterish this year uh, yes. for the Baltimore Orioles. He, you know, and that's, 
that's a that's a pretty good uh, uh compliment uh and then yeah and then fam uh you know who we talked about actually in our uh our uh, discussion of the mock trades uh he's he's had an excellent season but yes it's true ronald uh, anyone would take ronald over those guys it's interesting that ronald is ranked 11th i mean i think it's interesting that brian reynolds is ranked ahead of aaron judge you know but uh uh yeah that's just uh that shows you uh, some surprise names, but I actually kind of like that they're surprise names because if it looks just like a list of who the guys who have like the best OPS or something like that, then it'd be pretty boring, wouldn't it? Yeah, so I I just did the long scroll. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you have some notes on here, including Michael Garcia might be him. Um, yes. For your Kansas City Royals. Um, I guess as the list goes, like I'm seeing... Luis Arias, who's having a historic first half, but obviously more contact base. He comes in at 125 on the list, sandwiched between Tyler Stevenson and David Peralta. Um, so yeah. I, if you were applying to be in my front office, I would say I don't – that that seems like an outlier. Yeah. The tricky thing I, I found, and actually – um, because they are uh, fairly similarly ranked, uh, I can I want to compare the two. Stephen Kwan versus uh, Luis Arias, who are hitters who have I think in most people's minds like a pretty similar profile overall. Um, Kwan is actually ranked ahead of Arias, and and the, and the funny thing with Arias is, is um, a lot of his sort of process is similar to Kwan's, but he chases more. Arias actually chased like a lot out of the strike zone this year, even by his general career standards the thing that makes her eye special that i haven't really accounted for in the stat is that when he swings at a pitch outside the zone he almost always makes contact so it's almost like you know oh you chased that's bad you're not gonna walk you're gonna strike out idiot but for him it doesn't matter as much because he's probably mm. just found that pitch off and then he's getting his pitch in the zone and hitting a single up the middle of the next one um so that's what i mean he has Luis rice has made contact on 94 percent of his swings outside of the strike zone that's preposterous um and that's something that you know the stat th that's a minor factor into it but it, it maybe needs to account for that more uh with regards to a hitter like Luis Arise who you know he can he can he can chase but he will still extend the at bat so i'm uh i'm high level i'm a gm i've i've mm -hmm. been a gm this whole episode um i call you in and i i'm looking at this and i'm like this is interesting i see I see some of the concepts and constructs. I, I, I guess if I was like, hey, you believe in this, and I, I think there could be something on this, give me two guys that, let's say it's the offseason now, and uh, not necessarily contract stuff and withholding, but give me two guys that you were like, hey, if you could get these guys under our roof, I think you'd be making a fantastic decision uh, and potentially changing our, our orgs look out the next couple seasons. Yeah. Uh, a couple of sneaky guys who are, who are ranked uh, really heavily on here or highly, I should say uh, Andy Abanez on the Detroit Tigers uh, is ranked 22nd again, out of 315 hitters. He's the 22nd best hitter. According to this again, completely made up. Uh, hitting metric I came up with, uh, you know, I'm an idiot. You shouldn't listen to what I have to say about any of this. Uh, but, you know, I, I built it for fun, and I think it is based off of things that matter. And and the thing about Andy Abanez is it's the sweet spot, and it's the barrels. He hits the ball at really optimal launch angles, and he barrels it up. And you think, you know, he's and he's been with the Rangers. Now he's on the Tigers, and you think maybe if you could just get him – to uh, a different ballpark and you tweak a few things, maybe Andy Ibanez could be like a, a really useful piece and he probably wouldn't be that hard to acquire anyways. So, so that was one that definitely uh, stood out to me. Uh, another sort of interesting, uh, another sort of like uh, utility, you know, maybe play some third base type that stood out to me. Emmanuel Rivera on Jake snakes, nice snakes yes. uh, ranked 59th. Uh, and they, you know, they're in a weird spot with their third base. Cause they've had some, it's him. And then it's like Longoria and they've been kind of sharing time. And honestly, they could, if they really wanted to, they could make a move for, for Candelario at all. I don't think that would make the most sense. I think there's other teams that would probably give up more, but yeah, uh, Emmanuel Rivera, uh, who I actually liked, uh, even when he didn't, he debut with, uh, Kansas city. Um, but yeah, 
uh, he's he's another sort of uh, interesting one. Yeah, he uh, he did debut with Kansas City. He's he is twenty seven years old, and he he was interesting for me. I I believe he was WBC with, with Puerto Rico this year, and I I the WBC teams are always interesting to me because you know that roster comes out and you're like, ooh, PR, like okay, you know, Lindor, Baez, and then you they're only you know each of these teams has a you know some. One of these things does not like the other. Uh, one of these things does not have a hundred million dollar contract, and it it was Emmanuel Rivera, and I was like, hmm, is he really? For me, that always turns my head because you're playing for country, right? Like pride isn't on the table. We're not doing contracts. Like it, it, you weren't a. It doesn't matter if you were the first pick in the draft. Like you're gonna play. We're playing a couple games for our country, and we need the best team out there. Um, and Emmanuel Rivera was that guy for PR. Um, he started out the season crazy hot for the Snakes. Um, his game log, uh, he had an 841 OPS, like 20, 20 something games in, uh, 834, 34 something games in. I was like, okay, like, all right. So there's, yeah. there's something there. And I, I guess for any of our Yankee fans that have been listening and, you know, Bailey, I know we were we were laughing beforehand about living the dream and all that, and I, I don't know if you ever would dip your toe uh, near a front office, but you're not far off, man. Like, uh, the closer and closer we get to baseball, with the information that we have access to, like, this is, this is how people get involved. And, yeah. um, I don't know, I, I think it's, very interesting in what will grab the Yankee fans. Uh, Jake Bowers, uh, the Yankees yeah. said, you know, there's something here we like. Um, and they never actually said what it is, but Jake Bowers was a part of their plans this year, and we, we've seen that. He hit leadoff. Like, once he got called up, um, there was some swing path stuff, so maybe that's the next step that, that you would have to oh, go yeah. is, okay, so if, you know, if uh, Jake Rogers is doing this, um, do we need to change some swing path? Do we need to change something with the approach that will lead to better results? But, um, no, man, this these are the things that front offices look at that um, I'm almost excited that at one point this offseason, you know, if Emmanuel Rivera gets moved or uh, who, is, who is the guy we are just talking about? Um before. Andy Abanez. If Andy Abanez, who I think he's 30 years old now, uh, like you said, Rangers to Tigers, the not sexy Rangers to the not sexy Tigers. You know, if in the offseason you see the the low A prospect that gets traded for them, or you see the, um, you know, they're thrown the one year, $1 million minor league offer or something. This is what orgs are looking at. And then you might have the guy that you fall in love next year because they weren't on your radar, and then they finished with an 823 OPS. And part of my soul is also talking about Gio Urshela right now. Yeah. Another another one, uh, Ryan McMahon. He, yeah. could, he could be moved soon, you know? So he would be one uh, definitely to keep an eye on. I... Bailey... Okay. Sometimes I struggle with initiative. I like to do. Mm -hmm. uh, when there's something to do, I do. A team needs to get their hands on Ryan McMahon. Um, oh, yeah. Because the fact that, well, A, they do have a team-friendly extension on him, so, like, I, I think the Rockies will hold on to him. The fact that he has a career OPS plus under 100 because he plays in that ridiculous ballpark is so dumb, and we're just absolutely missing the memo. Um, I think if he got traded to another organization tomorrow, I wouldn't be surprised if his numbers were the same or better. Um, and you know, if he has a seventy, he has a seven ninety one OPS right now, and a one hundred three OPS plus, because yeah. he plays at Coors Field. Um, there might be some people that are SMHing right now, but I'm I'm shaking. They may be SMDH. <laughs> That's even worse. They really might be. Um, but if Ryan McMahon ends up on your team tomorrow, I would 
bet on uh, the great defense traveling because he has that. Oh, yeah. And I think you have a lefty that, like, everyone's looking for the cash god trade right now. Ryan McMahon, lefty swing, Yankee Stadium. Like, that would be it. Um, I think you would have, I'm not going to say Greg Nettles because I don't want to lose the Yankee fans, but, like, I think you'd have a power-hitting 800 OPS third baseman that can pick it. Um, and those do not grow on trees, especially <laughs> swinging lefty unless you're trying to fleece me as a GM. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe I still am. Maybe you still are. Crap. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm so far past all the Colorado Rockies stuff. Um, they get hurt just as bad by playing there. Um, and like, I'm normally a big OPS plus fan, but I, the guy has been, he played, he's basically, he played 151, 153, 91 this year. So he's playing essentially every day at a 251, 330, 767 OPS clip. And that is a negative OPS plus, um, technically because of cures. Um, so, yeah, go trade for Ryan McMahon. Everyone should be calling the Rockies. Brian Cashman, Gritchick, and McMahon. Mm. Make it happen. Um, Bailey, any other final notes on your stat that's changing baseball forever? Yeah, I, I, got, a, I got a couple Give here. Couple uh, Shohei, Shohei Otani ranked 39th. So that's one of those probably time to recalibrate a little bit uh, <laughs> because he, it, it would appear to me, at least my eyeballs, that he's the he's the best hitter on the planet right now. Um, his key weakness is is contact. When he swings, he doesn't always hit the ball. Right. But when he hits the ball, boy, does he hit it hard. So that's one of those things. It's it's kind of a constant balancing act, because I think if you know, if I if I were to uh, put even more of an emphasis on uh, the power in Otani's case and the lesser emphasis on the contact, then what's going to happen to the guys like Arias on this? Cause he's going right. to go down, you know? So that's, it's just a tough balancing act. Well, that's, and with any of these stats, it, they are just stats. It's where I get mad about. And now I'm old man yelling at cloud, but like batting average is a stat that just needs to be taken into perspective. Um, yeah, and, it's a huge component of on-base percentage, which I think every sabermetrician would agree is super important. And so if 80% of your on-base percentage is batting average, then yes, in that regard, batting average matters. And the the other thing that, you know, they teach in school and some of us skated by is showing your work. And, like, with 39th-ranked Otani, uh, a step below Nick Prado, shout out to our Royal Ooh. stands who have been telling me he can hit. Um, when you can instantly defend and say, well, yeah, Otani has a big swing and miss, which, uh, we had our eyes open one time because, uh, Katie Sharp, who's awesome with stats. Um, she was telling us that, uh, it was a young Clint Frazier as he was breaking in. So maybe I'm, maybe I'm throwing all of us under the bus here. Um, mm -hmm. but when he was missing, he was swinging and missing instead of weak contact. Um, which actually allowed him more opportunities. So on that 1-0 fast or 1-0 slider, instead of going uh-oh and hitting a weak ground ball to short because you got beat, you're swinging through it because you gave your A swing and you missed it. So there's there are times when swinging and missing should not be penalized, uh, more so with Otani than Clint at this point. Yeah, I think the, really the key would be, uh, one thing I really struggled with was, you know, we have these plate discipline plate discipline metrics like the how often do you swing in the zone or out of the zone how often do you make contact in the zone or out of the zone but what was funny was i i really struggled to actually make them correlate with strikeouts and walks in a meaningful way and i think you hit the nail on the head right there the difference is what count do you do those things in and so that if i really want to take this mm. thing to the next level it's just going to have to be sort of like based on what you do in, in different situations that'll be our follow-up interview um Bailey, let's wrap it up um, I on a personal level. Do you think your Braves make a splashy deadline move? I know they've been a ooh and ah team in me and BBD's heads the past couple days. Yeah, I mean, no. I they, they what what incentive do they have? You know, they they're getting that uh they're getting that uh 
probably a top seed in the NL anyways. They, they're going to get the buy, not have to worry about a wild card round. Mm. Uh, they could make a move. They could, you know, maybe there's uh starting pitching depth or a reliever out there, someone like that. Their bullpen's a little thin at the moment with mm. some of the uh, injuries they've had. Uh, but yeah, they, I mean, it's, it's, it's tough to mock trade to the brace because, and like, they just have, it's an amazing team. It's an amazing feeling. It's a great time to be a Braves fan, but yeah, everything they're doing is, you know, building towards uh, the sustainability and it's probably just going to be like this for a while. And they don't quite have a minor league system where they're able to trade for those top guys. Yeah. I, I wonder if they sneak a, a sneaker rental in us and I, in us, um, even, uh, you know, the, the fun one would be reuniting Freed and, a Giolito or Freedom. Yeah, Flaherty. that's the one I that's the one I've kicked around in my head the most as far as like actually a splash deal. Um well, I'm excited to find out, Bailey. Uh do you wanna we also normally tease this with a the next Bailey video. Um Ooh. I, the last time I loved what you said. It was the uh I've mentioned this player already. Um mm-hmm. and that really got the people jazzed up. Mm. Cause we mm-hmm. named about a thousand players. <laughs> Yeah, that and it was true. I I said Jordan Lyles. I uttered his name, and uh, but it was just very much in passing while we were talking about some of that A's yeah. Royal stuff. Jordan Lyles, what a career! Incredible. God, he's made a lot of money. Um, when will we expect the next video? I'm hoping like end of next week. Okay. So uh, there's a lot that needs to be done between then and now, but it's it's very much, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a monthly uploader, so it's got to come out at some point this month. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm, I'm really excited about it. It's going to be uh, long, it's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be ambitious. There's going to be interviews with players, which you don't always see. Wow. So uh, look forward to that. Wow. Okay. Okay. Did you, did you interview Giolito? Did I dream that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. No, it, I in fact interviewed him and then used that interview as a basis to do an episode of Baseball Bits, uh, and that's really the only time I think I've done that, uh, at least on my main channel. Well, we look forward to it, Bailey. We look forward to waking and jaking with you. I'm excited to see where we are in August. Uh, it's uh on our end, it's kind of this like all-star break into trade deadline. Like how can you not talk about the trade deadline? Um, That I'm a, these next two weeks are awesome and fun and I do love them, but there is a little bit of me. That's like, where are we going to be in August? Like what team are we going to be sitting here and being like, wow, their season's actually over. Um, Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the technically the Mets and Padres aren't dead. They are. They aren't dead, but there's a chance that we're sitting here in the first week of August and like, oh my God, they are. Um, yeah, or like, oh, they decided they were dead. Right. I, I wasn't sure if they were going to decide that, you know? Right. Imagine Billy Epler telling Uncle Steve, like, no, we didn't have the pieces this year. Um, <laughs> my God. And we're trading with the Yankees. Uh, huh. Bailey, thank you. You're the best. Everyone go check out. Uh, foolish Bailey, creamy beige. I always do that joke. Um, BBD, also the best. Uh, we will be back here Monday. Is that trade deadline week? No. Two yeah, week. Uh, yeah, yeah, the following. Okay, thank God. Um, but I just had a moment, so. Wow, scary. Passionate. Wasn't certain. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>